The leadership legacies of Nigeria's former military head of state and elder statesman, General Ibrahim Babangida, uh, have been extolled at the annual Ibrahim Badamosi Babangida Legacy Dialogue held here in the nation's capital, Abuja, to mark his 81st birthday. Well, the Rise News correspondent, Mary Chinda, tells us more. It is a gathering of eminent Nigerians who have come together to celebrate the life and the legacies of the man, General Ibrahim Babangida, former military head of state of Nigeria. Put together by the Ibrahim and Miriam Babangida Presidential Library Foundation, the IBB Legacy Dialogue 2022 presents an opportunity for these political leaders to dissect the theme, Issues in Africa's Democracy. The country cannot move forward except it has competent political leadership. For both the panelists and participants, this goes beyond marking the 81st birthday of the retired general. It is a time to take stock ahead of Nigeria's general elections next year. It is the responsibility of a political party to educate and inform its membership. It is the responsibility of a political party as well to go out on a political recruitment process that will see it electing the best candidate that will emerge in elections. It is true that some leaders, including the IBB, did manage to get some things right, but succeeding leaders abandoned those things. And as a consequence, we have found ourselves taking turn and competing to cry for Nigeria. We cannot get it right, whether electoral, political, or economy. Once we don't have the right attitude, the right values, and the right orientation. So for us, yes, it's a starting point. People come together, they discuss as the panelists are doing so far, and hopefully from here, people will go back to their various um, localities or their various settings and try and implement some of these changes. Though the former military president is not present here, his family members and protege describe him as a true leader. He's an inspiration, um, he's a mentor, and it, that is what he stands for for the country. And that is really impressive. Every time I get to talk to him, he's not worried about individuals per se, but he's, he's more concerned about everybody, unity of the country. General Bangida's life is concrete evidence that we cannot evaluate leaders in the immediacy of their tenure or just right after. Because it's obvious now that some of the strong opinions we have one way or the other may not be properly formed. And after many years, we can almost say with every sense of emphasis that that was a super genius leader. But from the little we saw, we know we are enriched with what happened in Nigeria and with his style of leadership carrying all along. He could take difficult decisions, even when they may not be very popular at the time. And um, he did a lot of that. Today, many people remember we set in nostalgia that era. As these Nigerians celebrate General Ibrahim Badamosi Babangida's leadership style ahead of the elections, there are increasing hopes the conversations here will chart a course for credible polls in 2023. Mary Chinda, Arise News. Well, joining us now is Aisha Babangida, who is General Babangida's daughter and an executive at the Ibrahim and Maryam Babangida Library. Thank you so much for joining us on the news tonight. Thank you very much. Good to Thank see you. you. Uh, yeah. I guess congratulations for that event, successful. And, uh, very apt as Nigeria goes into another crucial election, mm -hmm. general election 2023. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about democracy and mm -hmm. leadership problems, what would you say has been the biggest challenge? Is it that of leadership or followership? or all of the above and more? I think it's a combination of both, but you always want to start with the leadership because yeah. it's a leader that leads his people. So I think oh. what we set out to do at the Legacy Dialogue on this, this year, 2022, was to inform people, yeah. you know, inform people about challenges and to try and find solutions to those challenges. And we brought about um, wise men and women mm -hmm. to address these issues and help us 
conceptualize is to figure out what it actually means mm -hmm. and how it could change our lives if we do it this way or that way. So the voters, like the voters' education, for example. So we now know that it is not just the responsibility of the of INEC, mm -hmm. but it's also the responsibility of the parties as well. It is also our responsibilities mm -hmm. as well as human beings. Right, uh, and in organizing, I mean, this is the second edition of right. the IDB uh, Legacy Dialogue. Mm -hmm. Beyond all the talk, for you, did you live this particular dialogue today, being hopeful that beyond just talking about the problems, the mm -hmm. challenges, mm -hmm. did solutions really come out of this dialogue today? Mm -hmm. And what do you expect to actually come out of it? Absolutely. I mean, it is quite, even for me personally, it was quite mind-blowing because there are so many issues that... Um, were not addressed in the past. Mm. Monetization of votes, for example, mm. that is a very sensitive issue. But to to be informed about it and educated about it by people that have actually experienced it, you know, now we know that okay, there are certain measures that need to be put in place. There are certain mm. policies that need to be put in place as well. So the 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 outcome and the feedback is, is very positive. So we're hoping now to we've actually had some some professors that will be doing some research Great. on what came out of the dialogue mm. and also produce a compendium and hopefully share it within the parties, um, the electorate itself, mm. and then also the presidential candidate, the gubernatorial candidates and down. Does mm -hmm. it surprise you? Are you um, humbled by the fact that uh, over two decades after your father, uh, you know, uh, was president, military president, the first and only military president mm -hmm. that Nigeria mm -hmm. has had, that we're still talking about mm -hmm. his legacy? And it almost seems that the same issues that were there, mm -hmm. you know, at the time when he was president, still military today. president, are still uh, there today. Mm -hmm. And when you hear from participants about, you know, the, the strides that mm -hmm. he made, mm -hmm. free market, for example, mm -hmm. some of the policies they came up with, with the benefits of hindsight, does it give you a sense of, you know, the fact that he was way ahead of his time? Mm -hmm. I mean, I've always said it, I said it in the, in the dialogue this morning as well, that he, if anything, he was way, way ahead of his time, mm. you know. But the beauty is that um, we, we are still living and seeing what he has done for the country mm. and his structures are still in place, his policies are still in place. And that tells me that um, this is the way forward for that younger generation, mm. you know, to learn to think ahead you know, to be able to produce quality uh, development for the country. Right. So, so for me, it is, it, it is very humbling, as you said, mm -hmm. and I'm very proud of him, um, and I'm very proud to be his daughter. So now I have learned from his experience, his wisdom, and I have seen what is on ground as well, because I work with rural women as well in mm -hmm. the communities. So I hear as well. So he's one of the basic things that he's taught me was that always come down to a level where you can understand what they want, how they want it, and just feel them. So I am trying my own best as well to educate that young person that this is the way to think. You know, you have mm. to think now for tomorrow. Great. Uh, tomorrow. I, I like yeah. that we're talking about the past and mm -hmm. the benefits of mm -hmm. hindsight because mm. you said that uh, those that fail to learn from history about to make the same doomed to repeat it. Yeah. Right. And um, I just wanted to ask you, because no one is perfect, right. uh, would you say that IBB himself made some errors, some leadership errors? I want to talk about the contraption, for instance, of the interim government, the annulment of the elections in 1993. And have we learned, you as his daughter, mm -hmm. you've learned some lessons mm -hmm. from him. Mm -hmm. But as a nation, do you think we've learned have from we some learned? of these leadership errors we've seen in the past? Well, I think today we can see that. You know, there's certain things that he had put in place. And today we're either, it's still there, mm -hmm. or it has not been actually developed further. Mm -hmm. You know, so, yeah, as you rightly said, everybody's human. You yeah. know, we all have our good sides and our bad sides as well. Mm. But I know that he means well for the country. Uh, he has good heart and he has good intentions. So what he wants to do is to develop his country. And that he set out to do, him and my mother, and that's why we called the foundation, mm. Ibrahim mm. and Maryam Babangida mm -hmm. Presidential Library Foundation. So 
I, I think it's in order. Um, we're still working with what he has put in place over 30 years ago now. Mm -hmm. So that says a lot. And hopefully that also says a lot to the young person on how to think. Yeah, and speaking of legacies, uh, do you think today's Nigerian politician has an eye on legacy? Well, they should. Really? Do they? They should. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's they should. very well put. You, in <laughs> other words, you don't think they do. Well, you right. know, there's some that do, there's some that don't. Or maybe they're not informed about how, I mean, the, the platform that we have, the Legacy Dialogue, is also um, a lesson. You know, it's mm -hmm. also something that um, we put it out there hoping that maybe that politician would actually see that this is the way forward. Not mm -hmm. everybody has a solution right. to help uh, to create in their own legacy. Mm -hmm. So when they see a platform like this, then maybe they have an idea that, okay, this is what I need to do and this is how I need to do it. Is there going to be a third installment? What, well. what to look forward <laughs> to? <laughs> okay, before the third installment, yeah. uh, you've talked about... <laughs> You know how your father talks about bringing it down, mm -hmm. and I suppose that's to the grassroots, to the, grassroots. To the people. Mm -hmm. You also work with the women, right? And you've mentioned the youth, I think, twice mm -hmm. or twice mm -hmm. in the course mm -hmm. of this conversation mm -hmm. so far. When you look at the political atmosphere at the right. moment, um, what are your thoughts about this uh, part of the population? Mm -hmm. Is it this? welcoming to no, the no, youth? No, no, it's not. It's not just that. Right. It's the women, right? Mm -hmm the message, right. the grassroots, mm -hmm. the young people, mm -hmm. are they stepping up to the plate? Or is it the old same order we are going to see in the 2023 elections? Well, clearly we've seen that. But what the young person needs to understand is he needs to educate, or he or she needs to educate themselves, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. first and foremost, about the country. Well, actually, about themselves, who they are, mm -hmm. and where they want to go to. And about the country. You know, patriotism is something that has gone down a mm. bit you know so that ownership of your country to know that certain policies affect you you know is something that um, they need to be informed of they need to educate themselves get the best um, support mentorship that they can get so that they're able to know where they stand when it comes to the next general election for example you know I in the dialogue we had a group of young people mm. i think about 45 who were there, we call them the Gen Bs. Mm -hmm. And the Gen B literally stands for Generation Babingida. Wow. Yeah, so grooming this. <laughs> Hearing that for the yes, first time. Yes, so grooming this young of people with his <coughs> ideology. Mm. Right. So that's what we just have to do and try and educate and inform that this is the way forward. And the women? Way. The women as well. Mm. It's the same mm. thing, isn't it? Mm. You know, um, we have come a long way, Nigerian women. You know, we've done well, um, but we can do better. But how we can do better is actually to educate ourselves once more. You know, um, two days ago somebody was asking me that um, what's the difference between <laughs> a man and a woman? I don't know what kind of question <laughs> that is. You know, what but I, <laughs> you know, I said, well, first and foremost, the information for the man, for, uh, information for everybody is out there and it's free. Mm -hmm. The men know how to actually get those information. But some of us women wait for the information to it's get to us. Yes. Mm. So that is something now, it's free. It's there. Go get it. Mm. That seems to be where the challenge is. Absolutely. And for as long as the women wait right. for the information to get to them, how do you now change that narrative? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, your mother worked with rural women. Absolutely. There was a better life mm -hmm. for rural women, which meant mm -hmm. that she actually went to the yeah. rural mm -hmm. uh, women. Mm -hmm. And was still going to the rural mm -hmm. women. Yes. So um, what needs to change and how do you even equip the young people too, mm -hmm. you know, just along the line of her questioning, mm -hmm. to be more patriotic? Mm -hmm. How can you give them something to actually believe in mm -hmm. that Nigeria is worth even dying for? Dying for, absolutely. You know, so recently history has been brought back into our curriculum. That was taken out initially. Mm. Why? Shocking. Exactly. Mm. So these are things that are very important to the development of that young person. I know I grew up with history, and I know certain things, mm. and I got good mentors as well. So that has been brought back slowly, but that has to be implemented and pushed forward. So that is one. Citizen participation is very mm. important as well. Let them be informed about politics, uh, about development, uh, social impacts, and all that. So when I go down to the grassroots to educate women, it's not basically to educate them about education per se, right. but it's to inform them about what is going on in the country. Mm -hmm. Because uh, there's a lady that still believes that Gowan was in office, is still in office, 
Hmm? What? Right. Go on. Yes. Mm. <laughs> okay. So, so that mm. tells you a lot. Mm. Yeah. So information is not being sent to them. So they're not aware of a lot of things. So we have to be deliberate in that. I mean, you have the community radio. Any one of us can actually mm. own one and then send out information, mm. education, so that they will be able to, you know, learn a lot about what is going on. Yeah. And finance is sent to them. Um, empowerment is sent to them. They know exactly what is going on. So that's very important. It's all education. It's all education, right. and that's a good place to leave it. Uh, Irelu Aisha Babangida, the yeah. convener of the IBB Legacy Dialogue. Thank you so much for joining us Thank on Newsnight. Thank you very and much. And all the very, very best. Thank you.